In this video, I want to talk about the fundamental theorem of calculus, specifically the second part, um, or it, it's the smaller part. You're used to doing, you know, the evaluation of the definite integral is, you know, you take the antiderivative, plug in the upper limit, minus plug in the lower limit. But this part of the fundamental theorem of calculus is about taking derivatives of integrals. And it's kind of like squaring a square root. You know, if you square a square root, you just get what's on the inside. The square and the square root, they undo each other. And very similarly here, the derivative of an integral or the derivative of an antiderivative will just give you the function that's inside. But what is not mentioned is that you need to use the chain rule. Let, let me show you what I mean. So here, I want to take the derivative of this integral. And I'll just make it t squared. I don't know. So here's how we do it. If I'm taking the derivative of the integral, they go away. Right? It doesn't matter. But by the fundamental theorem of calculus, I need to evaluate at the upper limit. So all I do is wherever I see t, I evaluate at the upper limit minus evaluate at the lower limit. That's what the fundamental theorem of calculus says. But what they don't tell you, or at least not as often, uh, and you have to remember to do this, you need to multiply by the derivatives of these things. So the derivative of 2x is times 2. The derivative of 0 is, well, times 0. So the answer here would just be 2 times 2x squared. Or if you like, you could do 2 times 4x squared or 8x squared. Okay, do you see how that worked? Wherever I, wherever I plugged in, I also multiplied by the derivative of these things. So let's try a different example. And this is only when you're taking derivatives of integrals. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do x to cosine x of the square root, I don't know, I'm just making this up, of t minus one dt. Okay. Well, if I'm taking the derivative of the integral, they go away. But by the fundamental theorem of calculus, I need to evaluate at the upper limit minus evaluate at the lower limit. And by the chain rule, I need to multiply by the derivatives of these things. So the derivative of cosine, I put over here, that's, that's minus sine, and the derivative of x is one. Okay, let me do one more example just so you really, really have it. Let's do the derivative of the integral of x squared to x cubed of um, t squared minus t, I don't know, just making that up. Okay, I'm taking the derivative of an integral so they go away, but by the fundamental theorem of calculus, I need to evaluate at the upper minus evaluate at the lower. So I plug in x cubed for each t, so that's x cubed squared minus x cubed, and I have to do minus evaluate at the lower limit. So I plug in x squared everywhere I see a t. And by the chain rule, I need to multiply by the derivatives of those things. So over here, I need to multiply by the derivative of x cubed. That's 3x squared. Over here, I need to multiply by the derivative of x squared. The derivative of x squared is 2x. And I probably wouldn't leave my answer like this. I'd want to clean it up a bit. So x cubed squared, if I have an exponent to an exponent, I multiply them. And x squared squared, that's x to the fourth minus x squared. And I could probably distribute these things. So if I distribute this, this will be 3x. x squared times x to the sixth will be x to the eighth x squared times x cubed, that'll be x to the fifth. That'll, and if I distribute this guy, that's gonna be minus two x to the fifth. Minus a minus will give me a plus two x cubed. 
And the last thing you can do is combine like terms. So minus 3x to the fifth minus another 2 minus 3 minus 2 will give you a minus 5x to the fifth. And then this thing would be your answer. So that's probably a little bit of a tougher problem. I don't know if you'd see something like that on the test or not. But all you have to remember is if you're taking the derivative of an integral, you just evaluate at the upper minus evaluate at the lower. You don't have to do any antiderivatives or derivatives. And just, well, I shouldn't say that. You actually have to multiply by the derivative of the limits of integration. Okay, I hope you got something out of this video. Please rewatch it if you need more examples and have a great day.